online, make sure that people that don't have access to it still from the internet can still get it in an offline product. Now, this is, there's been a lot of studies and debate about this, and the number of active contributors seems to plateau um, as the Wikipedias mature. And you can see this within English. I mean, it's kind of flattened out. J Japanese has actually seen a decline in editors, where Russian, for example, has huge phenomenal growth right now because a lot of those articles need to still be developed there. So what we're trying to do is from the foundation point of view, how can we stimulate more people to be active editors and be involved? And that's a work in progress that we know needs to be addressed and we're still trying to figure out the best way to do it. So we're not denying the fact that this is an issue, but we do think that we can tackle it. And if you go into our strategic plan, you can see some of the ideas that we're addressing right now to make sure that we see future growth in the projects. Now, what we see here is pretty much what's going to reflect a lot of what we're going to be focusing on in the future. And the fastest growth in internet users is Middle East, Africa, and the Asia Pacific. I mean, internet access in North America and Europe, especially Western Europe, um, has been pretty good. And that's why most of those people that are online um, now are going to probably just continue to be online. So that growth is going to be somewhat tapered off. Um, the infrastructure hasn't really been built out in a lot, of, a lot of Asia and the Middle East and Africa, so that's why you're going to see most of the growth there. So to make sure that growth increases, um, you know, we're going to try to work with different um, companies, uh, NGOs, governments to make sure we see that growth happen and then we're involved with that project. Because right now, if you look at um, all the traffic, it really is predominantly from developed countries. But you see, starting to see bigger growth from the developing world and we want to see more of that continue to happen. And this is pretty interesting because you can just see where the traffic is coming for, from in different regions, you know, according to the language. And you see a little more growth in India, for example, in English, which that'll be probably more and more increasing. In Spanish, right now, um, some of the other countries in Latin America are starting to grow and grow in terms of their internet usage as well. And then um, Chinese, the interesting thing about China is that you see a lot of growth there as well. And we've been blocked like a lot of other websites up until the Olympics. And we're actually accessible now in China. Obviously, the articles are filtered because you know, that's the Chinese government policy. And you know, we don't like to get involved with anything that's political. But with the growth of the population there of getting online, you're going to see massive growth in that language and from that region. And Arabic is another area where I would say if you compare it to a language like Portuguese or Spanish, the number of people that actually speak Arabic, um, when you benchmark that according to the number of articles we have online, um, doesn't really um, match up in terms of what we're providing in terms of information there. So what that really means is that the number of articles in Arabic are pretty small compared to the number of readers out there. So we really need to figure out how we can grow that area. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, ever since you been presenting uh, this numbers of uh, visitors, uh, users, and editors. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been a little confused. Uh, for example, in uh, this graph, the, do visitors also include the editors? Yes. But editors are, are small, a, a small percentage of people that access Wikipedia. So if you're thinking about, we have 360 million um, readers and 100,000 active editors. And percentage-wise, I mean, it doesn't really affect it too much. But how many edits did you said uh, each one of those uh, uh, editors does uh, per week or per month? So an active editor um, in the, in the 100,000 range uh, makes at least five edits per month. So you have to multiply by five? In terms of? Accesses. Well, 360 million, we're talking about unique users. So you don't you don't you don't double count them. Those are uniques. Um, over which period of time? Over a month, every month. So if you if you've accessed that that site, 
if you access Wikipedia, like multiple times in the month, you're still counted as one unique user. So that doesn't affect that at all. When, when you're editing Wikipedia for five years, right. accessing every month, mm -hmm. you count it 60 times. No, for each month you are counted as one. I said five years times 12, that's 60. Well, so if you take um, the 360,000, like, if you look at February, we're at, we're at 347 million users, like unique users. So if you were that one user in the 347, you're still the one user in like the 360 two months later. That number doesn't increase for you. you know. So that's just the unique user per month. You're not double counted. These are according to Comscore metrics. So it's not, the difference you're, you're thinking about is page views. Right? So one user could have multiple page views. Um, I'm just saying that um, it's not been clear to me from your presentation this difference between uh, Wikipedia mm -hmm. and, for example, the other sites that you presented. Right. Because uh, uh, one of the earlier graphs that mm -hmm. you showed, uh, uh, we know that they don't have thousands of editors. So uh, when you have they probably have uh, uh, some staff editing, and uh, and then they have people who access their site. Now in Wikipedia it's different, mm -hmm. because not only you have the people that are going there just to look up an article, look up the page, but you also have um, thousands, right? Uh, right. Uh, uh, what's the number? Of editors? editors. A hundred thousand active okay, editors. So you, ask, you also have a hundred thousand mm -hmm. editors, a right. hundred thousand people accessing constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them, several thousands of times per month. So let me let me clarify that. And, so uh, and this makes a big difference in uh, the traffic. That is. Uh, so traffic is a different number. Yeah. Traffic per month is eleven over eleven billion. Okay. So again, this this right. Um, during your presentation, it's been difficult to distinguish, you know, okay. the figures. And, right. And, uh, so I will distinguish starting, it right now. Starting with that first uh, uh, graph in which you compare uh, Wikipedia to the other side, right. uh, which uh, have this big difference between them. Uh, so that's not that's not number of page views. That's actually unique users. So when you say 360 million, that's one person that is not double counted. Yeah. Um, if you've one person has seen a hundred pages, then that gets counted into page views. So in terms of page views, it's eleven billion. You know, so you know some of the hundred thousand that they've accessed pages, you know, multiple times. You know, then that's going to be counted into page views. But in terms of the three hundred and sixty million, they are counted once, no matter how many times they visit the page, any pages. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So in terms of growth, when I'm talking about you know our geographic priorities. So you saw where everything is growing in terms of internet access. So we're trying to follow that line, but also figure out where we also um, can have a match in terms of our beliefs, in terms of making sure the information is free, everybody can access it. And we've come down to these areas where we're considering in terms of spending some more of our resources and time. India, which I've mentioned frequently, because India has over a billion people, um, there's a lot of growth there. Um, they need as much access to free knowledge and education as possible. Russia, we sing a lot of growth in Russia. You have an extremely huge population of over uh, 250 million people. Turkey, the Middle East and North Africa, you're seeing a lot of growth in both those areas. Indonesia, um, that's a country of over 200 million people. Um, what's interesting about Indonesia is how people are accessing um, the internet there. I was talking to one of my colleagues at Facebook and Facebook's mobile platform, for example, they tell me that 80% of people that access Facebook um, in Indonesia actually do it through their mobile site. Um, we're obviously not Facebook because they're a, 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 a social um, media play. We're more about knowledge, but we understand that you know, reflecting what's going on in that market is something that we need to kind of address and figure out how we can provide um, more usability, better usability and better access in mobile. And Brazil. 
So Brazil obviously is one of those countries that's going very rapidly and you know I think it's relevant for people here too because um, we're going to see more and more contributions from the Brazilian community and that is also affecting the way Portuguese develops. And this information has just come out last week but what we're really looking at concentrating on and it hasn't been determined yet but out of these six regions we're looking at narrowing it down to three because we have limited resources and so we're probably going to be focusing on India, the Middle East and North Africa, and Brazil. So, you know, I just wanted to conclude is that, you know, really this is a global phenomenon. And right now you see that, like I said, it is dominated by certain languages and certain areas of the world. And we want to make sure that we open up the community more so we have more people of different ages, more women that are involved, um, more regions around the world that can not only contribute but access Wikipedia in many, many different ways. We're not just talking about editing. We want people to upload photos. We want them to contribute more technology tools. What we're trying to do is make sure that everybody is involved with this process. And I think you're going to see some exciting things happen in Portugal in the next year or two because the chapter here is very, very active. I know they're talking to a lot of cultural institutions and we hope to see a lot of that content being developed and a lot of movement happening here in this country that's really going to make the projects better. Muito obrigado.